Hey guys, Mr. Lee here again to talk to you about the instruments of the orchestra. So today we're going to talk about the string instruments and the percussion instruments. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, Mr. Gummo have uploaded the PowerPoint that I created that goes along with last week's information. Uh, but this week we're going to talk about the other two families that are commonly found in the orchestra. And we're going to start with the string family. So the first instrument I want to talk about in the string family is the violin. Some of you all might be familiar with the violin. You'd hold it out this direction. And with your other hand, you'd play the bow along the strings at the top. Uh, and in the PowerPoint I made, I included a little picture that has it labels all the different parts of the violin. Uh, so at the top you have the scroll and the pegs uh, and the peg box. And then just like a guitar, it has a neck that the strings come down. Um, and the strings come all the way down uh, to the tuners at the very end. That on a violin you can tune. Normally on a guitar you can only tune them up at the top. Uh, but those are just a few little parts uh, of the violin. You can see the rest in that picture. Uh, but then the bow in the other hand would come across and you would play all of those strings by moving your bow hand up and down. So the violin is probably, well, it is the largest section of instruments in the orchestra. There are the most violin players usually out of any other instrument family. So in a large orchestra like we talked about with how many players are in the orchestra last time, uh, there are usually about 16 or 18 first violin players just on the first part in a major large orchestra and then 16 second violins as well. So depending on the piece and the instrumentation and what players need to be on what parts, all of those players are changing parts other than like the first few players um, that are placed at the very top and are the very best players on their instrument in the orchestra. So the violin is the highest pitch string instrument. Um, we'll get to the other string instruments, but the violin has the highest pitch um, because it is the smallest. Um, and let's move on actually talking about pitch and how high and low notes sound. Uh, let's talk about the viola. So the viola, you'll see in the pictures on the PowerPoint, uh, the one in the, the picture on the slide with the viola that's at the bottom, the one instrument on the left is actually a violin and the instrument on the right is actually a viola. So you can see the size difference there um, and the viola looks almost identical to a violin but it is just a little bigger. Uh, and so the viola is a little lower than the violin um, and is basically the second um, instrument family found in, in, the string, in the string world. So there are usually about 12 violas in a large modern orchestra and this just sort of balances the amount of violin players and also that high pitch sound uh, that you hear from that section. Uh, so the video I attached for both violin and viola are just solo players playing those instruments. Um, and I think it's really neat to see, especially if you flip back and forth between the violin and the viola video, how they do actually sound a little different, even though they look uh, almost identical. So that's a little bit about the viola, and let's move on. The third instrument commonly found in the orchestra and part of the string family is the cello. So the interesting thing about the cello, as you can see in this picture, is it's obviously much bigger um, than the violin and viola. And when I took string methods at U of L, I actually, we only got to play two instruments. I actually got to play the viola and the cello. So I got to work with a master's student in cello, um, and she taught some of us how to play the cello, which was really fun. And the way you play a cello is you back up, and how you see the pin in this PowerPoint, uh, you place it down in front of you, and then with your other hand, you use the bow. And then the neck you would hold up here and that's how you would do all the fingerings. So it's a little bit different because it extends down in front of the player. Whereas with the uh, violin and viola, they're up here and you use your chin um, and your neck to sort of keep it in place while you play. Uh, so the cello, once again, is larger, um, so in this case it is a lower pitch again. Um, and there are usually about 12 cellos, um, so the, the violins and violas are up front. Um, or While well, the violins are usually up front and then the violas are sometimes in the center and then the cellos are on the other side. So the, the violins and the cellos are opposite from each other because they provide that great balance. Um, and then we will move on to our fourth uh, instrument in the string family, excuse me, is the double bass. So we have all those three sections in the front of the orchestra 
And then usually in the back, uh, either on either side, is the double bass section. So the, the double play, bass is so big, you play it either standing up uh, or on a stool. I mean, it just depends on the size of a player. A really good friend of mine who's a double bass uh, major, uh, she actually has to use a stool because she's so short, um, but she can still play the instrument. So no matter how tall you are, um, you can still play the instrument. There's just a few different ways uh, to help you do that. So the double bass is the largest of the string instruments in the orchestra, which also means it is the lowest. Um, and as I hope some of you are familiar with, you've seen a double bass used in jazz music as well. Uh, so the double bass is used for those you know, groovy walking bass lines in jazz music, um, as well as being incredibly important in the orchestra world um, and holding down those bass lines along with all of the brass and woodwind and percussion instruments that we're going to talk about here in a minute. So next on the PowerPoint, I have the harp and piano. So it gets a little interesting here because the harp is a string instrument and is part of the string family. Um, and the video I attached here uh, short, sort of shows you how you would sit with the harp um, and you would use both hands on either sides of the strings. Um, and there are a whole bunch of strings on the harp uh, to play a full chromatic range all the way from the longest string, which is the lowest note, all the way up to as close as the player is sitting on that side to play uh, those higher notes. So the harp is a string instrument and part of the string family because of all those strings. And then you see the piano and you think, well, the piano has piano strings as well. I'm sure hopefully a lot of you are familiar with pianos. There's one in Mr. Gum's room. Uh, but the piano is actually classified um, by all these musicologists as a percussion instrument because the way the piano makes sounds is with the hammers that are inside the instrument. And when you press a key, it actually triggers a hammer to strike the strings. So a piano is classified as a percussion instrument, which is a great transition into talking about the percussion instruments of the orchestra. So before we go, go on, both of these instruments can be used with the orchestra, whether they're solo instruments, uh, or a lot of times there's a piano inside, you know, on the stage with the orchestra. Um, and so these are very versatile and interesting uh, additions to what we would think of as just a normal orchestra with just wind, woodwinds, brass, percussion, and also string instruments. So let's talk about percussion. So there are a whole bunch of percussion instruments. On the slide on the PowerPoint here, on the top right you can see the timpani, uh, or what they used to be called, sometimes you still hear them called kettle drums. And the bottom right we have a marimba, um, and the smaller uh, version of that with different kind of keys would be called a xylophone, which is a higher pitch than marimba. Uh, and then in the le bottom left we have the bass drum. So these are just three of sort of the main instruments. A snare drum would also easily be considered a very important instrument in an orchestra percussion section. Um, but percussionists have to be able to play a whole wide variety of instruments. Especially percussion for percussionists in an orchestra, uh, being able to play the crash cymbals is incredibly important. And being able to crash those cymbals exactly the same way uh, or a very specific style or different kinds of ways is incredibly important for them. Uh, and, and they have to be able to play all sorts of different instruments and move around uh, in the very back of the orchestra as well. So there are usually only three or four percussionists, maybe more. Um, and generally, if there is a t if there is a timpani part and a timpani player, that's all that uh, that person is playing. They may have another cymbal or another small, you know, instrument that they are also playing. But normally, the timpani player just stays at the timpani the whole time because it is so demanding for them to have to move the pedals that you can see in this picture uh, to tune the timpani and be doing, you know, all three, four, five drums, however many notes are required during an incredibly long piece of music. Uh, so if you watch, if you go on YouTube and look up any sort of, uh, you know, orchestra percussion uh, or different things like that, you'll see them moving around. And in the video that I attached uh, for the percussion example on the slides is actually a point of view from a guy wearing a GoPro. And he's in the pit um, of a musical performance of West Side Story. Uh, and so you can see him moving around playing all sorts of different bell kits um, and auxiliary percussion and little things along with all the other uh, musicians in the pit 
uh, and he's playing all sorts of different instruments. So it's pretty interesting to see percussionists move around. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this little series going through all the instruments of the orchestra. Um, and I hope you've been enjoying some of the videos. Uh, and I hope you've been staying safe in quarantine and enjoying this time with your families. Um, to thank you all so much for tuning in today and listening to me talk to you. Uh, and everyone stay safe. Thanks, guys.